Hi, I'm Carl Azuz, and this is CNN Student News. We hope you enjoyed the long weekend. Our first story today is about infrastructure, the fundamental systems that serve a city, state, or country. So things like power plants, roads, and bridges. Part of this bridge in Washington State collapsed last week when a tractor trailer with an oversized load hit an overhead part of the bridge. Several vehicles fell into the water. Rescue crews showed up to help the victims. Three people were injured. Officials estimate that it's going to cost $15 million to fix the bridge. It's part of an important shipping route between the U.S. and Canada. Nearly $14 billion in cargo crosses that bridge every year. Authorities are hoping to have a temporary bridge up next month and a permanent bridge up in September. In other parts of the country, people have been struggling through different forms of severe weather. In San Antonio, Texas, huge amounts of rain over the weekend led to flash floods. At least three people were killed. Thousands of people lost their power and dozens of streets were closed because of it. San Antonio's fire chief said that on Saturday in 15 hours, 250 water related calls came in. Up in the northeast, it looked more like winter than spring. This is late May. Vermont seemed to get some of the worst of this. Up to seven and a half inches of snow fell in some parts of the state. One concern there is about the snowfall weighing down trees and branches. That could increase the chance of them falling on power lines. See if you can ID me. I'm an American organization that was founded in 1910. Since then, I've had more than 100 million members. My highest rank is Eagle, and my motto is Be Prepared. I'm the Boy Scouts of America, and I aim to build the character, values, and fitness of young people. Next year, there's going to be a change to a Boy Scouts membership policy. Starting on January 1st, the organization will allow young people who are openly gay to join. Last week, the group's National Council voted for the change. They also decided to maintain the current policy of not allowing gay adult leaders. The reaction to openly gay youth joining the Scouts has been mixed. Here's what a former Scout leader and a former Eagle Scout had to say about it. This is a victory for scouting. It's a vic victory for gay youth. Gay youth will no longer have to hide in the closets when they're participating in, in their scout activities and with their troops. So it, it gives freedom to and acceptance to gay youth in the scouting program. It's historic. I can't, in good conscience, represent the scouts anymore because of the uh, abandonment that I see of the, the basic values, the, the transcendent, um, God-given, Bible-based values that the scouts have been based on for over a century. In Moore, Oklahoma, graduation ceremonies happened as planned on Saturday. The town is recovering from last week's devastating tornado, which was on the minds of the graduates. We're damaged, but we survived. We're hurt, but we are resilient. We're graduating, but we are not done with our successes. One middle schooler in Moore is being called a hero for what he did during the storm. Nick Valencia explains it. As he walked through the rubble of his now leveled school, 13-year-old yeah, Dylan Ellis was bewildered. See, look at that. That's destroyed. It was the first time he had been back since the tornado struck. I don't know how we survived this. <sighs> he remembers taking shelter in the middle school locker room. Right through here in the store. He remembers being surrounded by the cries and screams of 50 children. No one was killed when the tornado destroyed Highland East Middle School. But this wasn't just a miracle. Isn't the choir room gone? Yeah, the choir room is gone. Quietly standing next to him is his 12-year-old classmate, seventh grader Diane Lee. On Monday, Dylan probably saved her life. Did you feel like you were going to get sucked away? Yeah, I felt like the wind around me is like going in circles and everything, and I, the ground wasn't underneath me anymore. And he held onto my hand and jumped onto us me. I see her start to go up. I jump on her lay on her and then grab onto the lot bottom of these lockers that were inside the ground. And then when it's, once it's over, I push her out of the way and then all the debris starts to hit me. How did you think so fast? How did you know to do what you did? I just thought of her as my family. What would I do if they started to go up? Didn't think, just did it. Memorial Day is an American tradition dating back to the U.S. Civil War. 
And for the country's veterans and their families, yesterday was a deeply reverent time, a time to remember those they've known who've died serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. President Obama asked for Americans to do more than remember fallen troops on Memorial Day. He encouraged people to care for their relatives and to help the country's living veterans. This is the president's traditional wreath laying at the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery. CNN caught up with a serviceman who works there. It's an honor being able to work in Arlington National Cemetery. There's some days where you just get that like hair raising on the back of your neck feeling that like this is just right, that it's just perfect, that you wouldn't want to work anywhere else for the rest of your life. Everyone will work on each other's uniforms evenly. You'll have somebody else around you taping you off, making sure there's no lint, debris, or anything in there. May not look as good or may not look uniform to the other soldiers on the plaza. Let's see your pants, the front of your pants. So. The reason why some of us may have certain things going out the door is because it just worked for us during training to kind of calm us down before we go out the door. One of those things that just gives you motivation to be like, hey, I'm gonna crush this guard change. This guard change is gonna be amazing. Another hot one. Another hot one. You have the sun hitting the plaza and then with it being so bright, it bounces off and hits you back. And it just feels like the temperature is even warmer than it is like if you're in regular clothes. You have thousands of soldiers that die for our country. I don't look at it as just three unknown soldiers that I'm guarding. I'm guarding the 300,000 plus soldiers that gave their life for this country. The city of Seaside Heights, New Jersey relies on tourism for 65% of its economy. A big tourist draw there is the boardwalk and that was slammed by Superstorm Sandy last fall. The town has been working to rebuild it in time for summer. Poppy Harlow looks at how they're doing. The games are back on in Seaside Heights. Oh, it's back. It's back. It's back. We're back. It's back. 100%, but we're back. And the people who came back liked what they saw. Oh, it's great. It's really good to see everything back to where it used to be, almost close to where it used to be. Almost because the rebuilding continues nearly seven months after Sandy tore up much of the Jersey Shore. Vincent Storino's family owns Casino Pier. Before Sandy, it held 38 rides. Now, this. How much progress have you guys made? We made tremendous progress. In three months, we've done what should, be, what should take three years. It hasn't come cheap. Millions? It's millions. Tens of millions? I would say tens of millions. The new boardwalk alone cost nearly $8 million. We did what we had to do to get the doors open, to let people know that Seaside Heights is open, but there's so many more things we got to do. Like more benches and lights, but Mayor Bill Akers is satisfied. You can walk the boardwalk north to south, and it seems like we got a few people up here today um, uh, enjoying it. A few people less than a typical Memorial Day weekend. I would say we're doing about half what we did last year. But that hasn't dampened spirits. I mean, look around. I mean, you, can't, you couldn't ask for better weather. Couldn't ask for more people. This is great. This is the Golden Goose, Lucky Leo's. We knew it was going to be slow, but just the idea that we're here, and that truly is the remarkable thing. What a way to ring in 100 years. Well, I guess we're doing the same thing that they did back 100 years ago. They needed to build a boardwalk. We're building it. Poppy Harlow, CNN, Seaside Heights, New Jersey. If you were driving from West Point, New York to Dallas, Texas, it would take you about 24 hours. Doing it on foot takes 27 days. That's exactly what these folks are doing. They're part of an event called Carry the Load. It's a 2,000 mile relay through 12 states designed to honor fallen U.S. servicemen and women and their families. Participants carry the American flag and walk in honor of friends and family they've lost. The event wrapped up yesterday, Memorial Day in Dallas, and that's how we wrap up today's show. We're getting close to the end of the school year. Our last show is on Friday, June 7th. We'll be back to relay more stories to you tomorrow, though. I'm Carl Azus. Have a wonderful day.